Well, speaking of making some sense or not making sense, uh, Herschel Walker actually talked about this issue. It was an interview where he did with someone where, you know what, I can't even explain it. I'm going to let him just go ahead and talk. Press play. Herschel, how do you feel about people that want to change America from when you and I were kids? I mean, I mean, there's, you know, we have, I guess it's 80 to 90 or 70 to 80 million people in America that were born after 1990. So these are kids who, you know, who grew up, you know, when they were 10 years of age with the, with the real beginning of the computers and the Internet at home. So they don't know the world that we know pre-Internet. They don't know that the bullying was not really, we may have been bullied when we were kids, you know, in a class or teased and things like that, but not, not the type of culture that these kids have with the internet today. What do you say to those kids and those young people that are voting? Well, first of all, they don't know that the grass is not green on the other side, that they think they're somewhere better. And if they know another place is better than the United States of America, my thing is, why don't you go there or tell me, let me know who that is, because I can tell them right now that's not. I think our biggest problem is we've not shown our kids that most of the people today hadn't earned the right to change America. And what I mean by that, there are people that have died or not given their life up. There are people that have given their life up to this flag. They've given this life up that, for the national anthem. They've given their life up for our freedom and these liberties that we have in this country today. And we're taking it for, for, for granted. Well, I don't want that to happen. And I'm saying, and I'm not being tough. I'm saying, if you know a place better, you go there, but you lose your citizenship here in the United States of America. And then when you come back, you got to come back legally like we should be defending the border. Um, folks, here, here Albie Coles uh, is Vice President of Economic Development for the Georgia Piedmont Techn uh, Technical College. Avita Thornton is District 9 Commissioner, uh, Athens, Clark County. Karina Gallagher, District 2 Board of Education, Clark County. Uh, James Alexander, Workforce Services Manager, Goodwill of North Georgia. Justin uh, Kernan uh, with the Warnock Campaign, Rashid Malcolm uh, Restaurant Tour. Glad to have y'all uh, on the panel. Plus, of course, I still have uh, Julian Malvo, uh, Omicongo Dabinga, and uh, Representative Renita Shannon. Okay, I'm going to just throw this out to the panel here. Uh, uh, and I am totally just confused by what I just heard. First of all, I it is last I checked because is is it not constitutional if you 18 and older you can vote? Can we get a sign of hands that that's okay? I'm just making sure. All right, so sign of hands that's correct. 18 and older. When you hear somebody running for the U.S. Senate says that folk who were born after 1990 have not earned the right to change America. Isn't that what voting is? That when you become of age, you have the right to vote however you choose to vote? So when you hear someone say that folk haven't earned that right to vote so to change America, what comes to your mind? Anybody? Because I'm confused. Actually, I'm not, but go ahead. When I hear that, I hear somebody that's not qualified for the office. If you don't think that the people that have a constitutional right to vote have the constitutional say-so on, on how they can change the country, then obviously you're not qualified to hold the position that you're running for. I mean, I, I can understand. Go, no, people like, I, mean, I can understand you're upset with how young voters are voting, but to say they have not earned the right to quote change America, change America. Yes, they have. The moment you turn 18, if 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 you can sign up for the military at 18, if you can get your driver's license, if you can start paying taxes, uh, I think you have a right to change however you whatever you want to change. If you think something something should be changed, not just that. It's that fear that you have as an older person saying, "Well, you hadn't done enough." to earn this right to make any kind of changes. They've lived through some experiences that you didn't, all right? They've grown up with technology and opportunities that you weren't afforded. You wouldn't want anybody, when you were younger, you wouldn't want your parents saying, we need to stay like this. We shouldn't change anything. Now they have access to education, and literally they have the world at their fingertips. They need to, if I'm going to take advantage of it, well, this is the group that's doing that, that 18 to 30-year-old range. They are doing that. They're using that knowledge that, frankly, I'm not much older, 
But, you know, those individuals have access to things that we didn't think about. They are, we say that they're growing up too fast. They're not growing up too fast. They're seeing the technology. They're using that technology. We're putting that technology in their hands so they can be better informed than we were. Why do, what is, what, that makes no sense to me. But also, what, what, I guess what also bothers me is that when I hear that, well, what we heard show, uh, we, we grew up in a different age. Yeah, but you also didn't have shooter drills. I mean, the reality is, I mean, sure, I, I remember the stupid drills we used to go through if there was a nuclear attack, which was always dumb, go in the hallway, like, st stick your head down. If it's a nuclear bomb, trust me, that ain't stopping a damn thing. That is, but the reality is, if you are a, if you are a student today, you have had to deal with a level of violence in school that they didn't experience. I didn't experience. And so if you are a young voter, that may be an issue you actually care about. I was going to say, not only at school, at Walmart, at the grocery store, pretty much all parts of society. But to your previous question, though, when John Lewis and others marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, he wasn't 30 years old when he got bashed in the head by those state troopers. So to, to, to tell 18 to 30 year olds that their vote and their voice doesn't matter, it's really a slap in the face to the Constitution. But at the same time, I mean, are we really surprised by anything that we hear? that comes out of Herschel Walker's mouth. The, the, the biggest thing we can do is send a message to the GOP that recruited him to run is that you can't come at us like that. You got to come better. You, you thought you could put up a Georgia running back who was a great running back, but you thought you could put up a running back, a black running back against another black, well-educated past and split our vote and we wouldn't know the difference. You thought that would work. So the message we can send is that, no, you got to come better than that. So. I think I want to um, take this from a, an, another perspective, I guess because I'm just older. Um, education. If they would have, the things that I know now about my history at my age, I would be a rock star if I had learned it when I was in school. I would have been an absolute rock star. All I learned about was slavery, plantation, and the civil rights. I found out, what is that, is it, is it Lake Lanier? It is covered a black city. I would never, I ain't going to Lake Lanier. <laughs> but when we're not taught our history and all of this stuff is starting to bombard on us now, we got to deal with it. I didn't have to deal with all of that stuff because my white curriculum in school was so sanitized. And we, even when they taught you about slavery, it never made you feel that you could rise up. You didn't have no real reason to vote because you ain't nobody. And I'll be honest with you, I think there's some um, some other folk that aren't GOP that still feel the same way. So I'm gonna say it like it is. I, I, just, I just think that, again, when I listen to that line of criticism, and, and I've seen a lot of that uh, since election day uh, from a number of Republicans across the country who are upset. I mean, literally, there were discussions on Fox News about we should, we, we should raise the voting age. No, how about you come up with a message that might be relevant and appealing to a young voter? See, th th that's what bothers me the most. Uh, you have folk who you don't like the results, so your deal is let's shrink the electorate. As opposed to, no, how about you learn to reach folk who did not vote for you, uh, and uh, and then all of a sudden that they, they might be interested in you. Uh, let, let me get your thoughts, uh, your thoughts on that. What, you gonna thought you going to sit up here and not say nothing? <laughs> I'll sit you back out. It, it was like when Prince kicked folk off stage who wouldn't dance. I'll sit you back out in the audience now. <laughs> Well, what comes to mind is um, when I was coming out of high school, I remember they were changing, like, drinking ages, and they were talking about raising the age for, like, cigarettes. And, and it's like literally every time someone would have an enjoyment, they would say, oh, let's just raise the age. That's how we dealt with it. Which happened. I mean, federal highway laws, the law was changed. Well, the dr drinking was raised from 18 to 21. Right. So I'm just saying none of this is new under the sun. I mean, really, everything we're experiencing now, it just continues to trickle. However, 
at my grown age, I'm just like, when is it going to stop? When are we going to finally realize that as a community, we have to include everybody? Just like the nucleus of the family, we include everybody. When we talk about our issues and voting and age and, you know, things that are going on, we have to include everybody. And that includes our 18 to 30. That's my opinion. What, you thought you were just going to sit up here and not say nothing? Look, bo I'm about to kick both y'all off this stage. Y'all try all of a sudden okay. be, how you going to be shy sitting on stage? I don't know. Um, okay, so where my mind went was um, when he was talking about raising the, the age, um, I don't think that there was a consideration that 18 to 30-year-olds will eventually be 60-year-olds. And if they don't start to shape the community or a nation the way that benefits them when they're 60 year olds we just don't we're gonna have more of the same problems where we keep on repeating the same issues over and over because we're not allowing young people to decide what their future looks like uh, I'm gonna pull in um, uh, Julian on Macongo and um, and Renita Julian I want to start with you, you, you you're Dean there uh, in Los Angeles and again that comment to me is 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 is, is completely insulting because if you actually look at American history, you look at black history, which is American history, we can show you numerous changes that have happened in this country by folk 18 to 30. So there's this idea that somehow, oh, they should, you haven't earned the right to change the country. And then if you don't like it, leave. That literally is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Because what that says to me is that Herschel Walk and those who support him have not read the Constitution because we changed that document. Because if we, if we didn't change that document, we're not sitting in this room right now. We might be in the Athens cotton press. We probably pressing cotton. You know, Roland, there's a brother on your panel who said, you know, Roland, I'm surprised at anything that Herschel Walker says. That man is a certified public idiot. Period. Um, and he just needs to shut his mouth. Uh, but he can't. And the fact that Trump and those brought him from Texas to Georgia is a slap in the face of every Georgian, Democrat or Republican. What are they saying? There are no Georgians that are qualified to run for Senate. So it, it, it's an amusing situation. But beyond amusing, it is frightening. The second thing I would say, a friend of mine sent me a text the other day. I didn't appreciate it. He said, how does it feel like going from the youngest person in the room to the oldest person in the room. Um, because I guess I graduated from college when I was 19 or something like that. But anyway, it was it was a funny kind of thing. What I would say is I've got a 360 about it. Most of the change in this country has come from young people. They have fresher eyes. They have more energy. They're prepared to deal with the, young, the long haul. Often we look at them. I mean, as a, I would look at young people and say, Really? You going to do that? You will jeopardize your scholarship to do that? And I've had a couple of them tell me, oh, hell yeah. The fact is that they have a different kind of vision, and I think we have to embrace it. What we know as black people in terms of our revolution is that children, children were hosed. Children. And that changed the course of history. What we know when we look at any number of other things, the Black Panther Party, Come on now, we want freedom. We want the power to deter determine our destiny. Yes, I used to hang out with the Panthers. Um, but th these were young people too. Young people who saw the world very differently. And that's what we have to embrace, looking at this world differently. We cannot unpack predatory capitalism using the tools that we have. As Audre Lorde said, the master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. Our young people are our newest tools. Oma Congo, I, I don't know who the woman was who was questioning Herschel, uh, but she clearly was a lot older. If young folk didn't do what they did, Jim Crow still exists. That was the world that she lived in. And see, again, that and, and so the anger, the anger, the reason that question was asked and the reason it was answered that way is because they are angry with how young people are voting. And the reality is looking at again uh, our history you talked about uh julian talked about folks uh, who would lose scholarships people people got to remember 
we, we, we laud many of these folks who were in the black freedom movement, but many of them were kicked out of HBCUs. Conservative presidents said, if you go work in this movement, we are going to kick you out. They were kicked out of Fisk. They were kicked out of many of these institutions. They put it on the line uh, to change things. And so I, I just think it is, it is just insulting to say to somebody, you have not earned the right to change this country when that is exactly what you have earned the moment you turn 18. The power of the ballot is, and then, and then when Herschel says, well, folks, have died for this country. Well, I'm a Congo. What the hell did they die for? Exactly. Exactly. Say you yeah, yeah. die for the exactly. rights of the Constitution yeah, yeah. if you ain't read it. I'm a Congo. <laughs> man, you, 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 you're preaching the truth, man. Look, when he's talking about people having, they don't have the, the, the right or the ability, I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know how old he is, but I'm like, what have you done to earn the right to vote? I mean, does earning the right, did, did taking your wife to, or, or girlfriend to get an abortion, but you ain't man enough to go in to, with her? To, did that earn you the right? Playing Russian roulette earn you the right? Putting a gun to your other wife's head to earn you the right? Like, what earned you the right to be able to get out there and vote? Our young people have always been on the front line. How many videos some of us who are alive lived those experiences where students were locked into their buildings during the civil rights movement and jumped out of the windows? We've seen stories where people with, with the Freedom Riders, and they're like, they weren't in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. At the end of the day, the young people have been the people that have stepped up. And there are people who are half, and I consider myself an activist, I'm out there doing the work, but there are people half my age now who are doing more work than me with their energy and fire, who deserve the right to vote. And quite frankly, the woman said that, oh, they don't know what we know. Well, damn it, if you didn't have this critical race theory, quote unquote, activism, taking all the history out of the books, maybe they would learn a little bit of history. If you didn't have situations where, like the Little Rock Nine, you can't talk about the Little Rock Nine at, at Central High, what, what are you talking you pull in the history away, then you say they don't know what we what we knew. They shouldn't have the right to vote. But the fact of the matter is, even the stuff that you knew was corrupt because you had a racist image of us. And now Herschel Walker is just walking in that same line, coming out here talking like Pootie Tang at the end of the day. He has no knowledge of our history. Our young people are leading the way. And to be quite honest, when you started out this segment and Miss Latasha Brown was speaking, I went to my phone and made another contribution because you also talked about these young people that are out there fighting and their organizations need our financial support as well. So let's continue to make sure that our young people are learning our history and giving them the right to vote. And quite honestly, there are some people out there like the Herschel Walkers who, in my opinion, shouldn't even be able to vote because they don't have real knowledge of what's going on in the world. And when they do, maybe they get a ballot. But until now, you need to step aside. Keep walking. You need to step aside. Keep walking. R Renita, here's why I find this to be laughable. Herschel Walker goes to the University of Georgia in 1980. The first black football players at the University of Georgia arrive nine years earlier. If folk did not fight Jim Crow, you don't have black players at the University of Georgia. I wonder if he said those folks did not earn the right to change America, which allowed for him to star at Georgia and to win the Heisman Trophy. I wonder if he would say that. Herschel Walker and the woman who introduced him, they both are completely out of their minds. And here's why I say that. They are making the point that anybody who's between 18 and 30 doesn't have the right to vote and, and should not be able to change a country. But what about the other folks who did live the majority of their life or at least half their life, in my case, who did not have access to the Internet and still want change? How do you account for those people? And so the whole thing just really gets my blood boiling because he's talking about how people have died for the right to vote and, you know, all this patriotism about voting. The people who he should be lobbying to lose the right to vote are the domestic terrorists that showed up from his party on January 6th to try to burn down the U.S. Capitol and try to destroy democracy. Those are the people who should oh. actually lose the right to vote. So Herschel right. needs to shut up. And I beg of you, Georgians, as a state representative from Georgia and a person who lives in Georgia, please, please, please do not allow Herschel Walker to craft policy for the state of Georgia. He has no business anywhere near policy. It is clear he does not know history and have tried to refrain 
from speaking about his level of intelligence um, mm. that he is trying to present to folks. But it is just at a level where it is almost not even containable anymore because he is just getting more and more ridiculous as the days go on. And the hypocrisy of forgetting how his folks in his party have demonstrated so much um, just destruction and what they have tried to do is just unbelievable to me that he would suggest that anybody with the exception of the folks who showed up on January 6th should lose their right to vote. It's just unbelievable. I'm going to a break, uh, but let me also say this here. Uh, it's also insulting to bring up technology and young folks when a significant number of Georgians and Americans who live in rural America don't have broadband access. And not only that, a number of poor people who live in major cities who also don't have access to technology, to the internet. And so that also, to me, is someone who is out of touch with the actual issues. Because if you're raising technology as a point, well, then you might want to go to a lot of places in this state where they have trouble accessing technology because of broadband. I'm just saying. But then again, I know how to read. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. Don't wait till November 8th. We can vote today. Your early vote started this week. We're on Savannah State University's campus. We will be dorm storming today, giving our treats for everyone. We hope to see everyone at the polls when it comes to November. If you believe we got power, let them know. Make some noise. Put a fist up. I need to see a fist in the air because we got power. Come on, you put it up. Come get your shirt. We're out here in the streets of Savannah, Georgia. James, do not forget to go vote. I got you. If we vote, the right people in. We can make a change. We can get these resources in our community. I am a woman, and it is important that we have the say-so of what we want to do with our bodies. We are concentrating on entrepreneurism, providing young people with resources and training that they need in order to change their trajectories. We won't black down. Democracy is on the ballot. Voting rights is on the ballot. Voting suppression is on the ballot. I am most passionate about those three combined because they all impact each other. Savannah is my home. I care about my community, and I care about representation in my community. Our voices are still going to be heard no matter what kind of obstacles try to come up against us to stop us from voting. We're still going to be standing our ground. I see the effort that's being made to keep our communities from voting. So that makes me realize it's even more important because if it wasn't important, they wouldn't be fighting to make sure we could vote. This doesn't stop this year. This is a forever movement. We're going to exert our power as a people. We walk in our rightful place. We're going to change our communities, fight for our communities, and build our communities. Folks, Black Star Network is this. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?